Good morning, guys and gals. This is your host, Joe, live with Yosef. It's Monday, uh, July, uh, June the 10th, and I'm going to, after this little intro, uh, Vin, uh, my brother Vin, made a nice 16, 17-minute clip where him and I chatted more like an interview-type deal, uh, and he, uh, he put on his channel, Adventure Vin, and with his uh, permission, I have taken his content and I'm going to put it in in its entirety after the opening here. Uh, there's really no way to, for me to put this on YouTube with any type of efi uh, efficiency. And I didn't want to tack it on to what I've already posted in the comments uh, from our Saturday visit. So I'm going to put that in here now. I think Vin is absolutely, uh, 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 he's absolutely good people. And uh, you'll see the 16, 17 minutes here. Uh, I won't have a close. Th this will be your close and the close on on Vin's uh, on Vin, on Vin's content. So, this is your host Joe, Life with Yosef. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your day. Peace be with you, and we'll see you for the next one. Before I start Vin's clip, when I arrow, I want you to watch my mouth. Do this, and then you're going to see me do this with my hands. That's the Tourette's. That's the stress that I'm under manifesting itself in ticks. That's what a tick is. My stutter is a tick as well. I've always had it. I didn't know what it was until I got diagnosed. At the same time, I got the ADHD diagnosis up in Coos Bay. I'll, 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 my doctor up there, my psychiatrist, was just changed my life. Anyway, I want to point that out that uh, uh, you're going to notice this and think, damn, dude, what the hell's wrong with you? They're ticks, Tourette's, incredible stress. Not embarrassed or ashamed uh, about it. This is what it is. This is how it manifests itself, just like that right there. I know I stutter. Y'all who know me, you know, you don't notice it, but trust me, I notice it in myself, and I could really pick up when other people stutter because I know a bunch of the tricks. So I wanted to add that in here right before Vin stuff starts. You're going to watch that now. And now this is your close. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your day, and thank you, Vin, for letting me use the content. This is Joe, your host, Life of Yosef. Enjoy your day. Peace be with you, and we'll see you for the next one. Hey, good afternoon, YouTube. It's a nice, I gotta check something really quick. It's a nice, uh, warm, sunny day in Southern California. I'm sitting with a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he goes by uh, Life with uh, Joseph, correct? Life with Joseph, yes. Life, Life with Joseph, I love the way he says that. I'll put a link in my description box of his channel. I have referenced him before. This is gonna be something very unique for uh, Adventure Vin. There's no KLR behind me, no motorcycles. There's not a real specific venue or location that I'm gonna be telling you about. But I'm gonna, I like to talk a little bit about the philosophy of life and um, in a sense what it what has YouTube brought into my life and why why we do that. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is, well, I'm we're at Glen Helen. We're at Glen Helen Park. This is in the vicinity if you're heading southbound on the 15 freeway. Say you're coming from Vegas. If you're heading southbound on the 15 freeway, this is in the vicinity on the southbound where the 15 and the 215 split. Glen Helen Park is known as a regional fairgrounds, also known there's a racetrack here, a lot of, and there's an RV area. Very busy this weekend, they're hosting some of the university graduations. I'm about 20 to 30 minutes from this location in Riverside. This is also an area that Route 66 traverses if you're into the Route 66 scene. But let me get back to point. Joseph often says, uh, he talks, he uses the word fellowship a lot. And one thing that I really feel he embodies and he's sincere with is when it comes to that, there are a lot of circles. There are a lot of, you mainly may hear it in a uh, theological setting, you know, a uh, fellowship hall, let's get together for fellowship. And they do not corner the market on it. And I don't think they really uh, embody it as much as Joseph does. And so we've had a lot of that. We went to the Route 66 station, uh, the Richfield station that I volunteer at. I've done video of that. We went to the Milta, Milt, Miltla, can't pronounce it, cafe that's right on the corner of Mount Vernon uh, where you make your right-hand turn and start continuing on Route 66. Sixth Street. 
6th Street. Joe did some caption on that, so when I send you the link, check that out. But I'm going to ask Joe a few questions. We're going to have some back and forth for about 15 minutes, and then I'm going to get on my way, and Joe's going to uh, take care of some business. But Joe, one question I asked you when we were together that I wanted to share is uh, the intrigue and what got us together was the fact that we're YouTubers. Uh, you and I, if we wanted to define it, I would say he and I have some political differences, some religious religious differences, but we're not polarized to the point where we miss out on this fellowship. And I think that's what people need to learn. But what got you into the YouTube? Uh, you, were, you were explaining it earlier, but because I love your channel. What got you started? I, uh... I retired in 2014. My wife and I went full time in the RV for five years. I have uh, footage on my channel as far back as uh, 2012 and 2013. Um, I was going, to, I kind of scoffed at YouTube back then, but I realized that I was going to have one of my nephews make some uh, uh, DVDs that were going to be two plus hours long, and it was a little bit more challenging that I think he realized and he he's running a business so it's not like he has all day for this so I realized that I should probably start putting some of this stuff on YouTube which I did and I wish I'd have put it all on YouTube because I lost a bunch of my raw footage in the fire from when we were in Texas and stuff so I have it on YouTube now I have probably 960 original content videos, uh, um, almost all, uh, at least 600 travel from the last uh, 12 years. Um, uh, did, you, I, did, you, did you expect this many followers? Like when you did it, were you like doing it thinking, or do you ever stop to think, wow, people are interested, why are they following me? I mean, did you ever think that you'd be at the point you're at now? Well, I'm, yeah, but I have like 130 subs, but I think I get about maybe 20 views is I'm, I'm really happy with. I don't do, I, I do this one for myself, two for my late wife who really lived vicariously through my travels when she could no longer travel, and three for my, um, for my uh, family, my Hanai, who have interest in me, who love me and, and are interested in what I do. Now, I've met a couple of people, then being one of them here, when uh, I either found them, or they found me, or the algorithm. Uh, then was mainly because the KLR 650, of which I had in 1992, that got stolen out of my garage about eight years later. So I love the KLRs. I won't have one again, but I, I, I've been riding since I was 16. I'm 63. And um, I basically the algorithm brought us, uh, 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 um, matched me with Vin. And uh, then is the second YouTuber I've met. I met uh, John uh, John Wise, who's a track coach at Wichita State. His channel is Travels with, uh, with a Wise Guy, and it's the same type of thing. I like the content, and most of all, John made the point when I met him in, in Virginia City, Nevada, that my channel's personality-driven. But then again, aren't all these channels personality-driven? There's a lot of YouTubers that do the same as uh, the same type of content Vin and I do but it's the personality you watch because you like the the delivery and style of the content and I watch Vin I like his his style and his uh, delivery and and the content and it turns out that we met down here he he took me to the Cucamonga station uh, we went to uh, lunch at the Milta uh, we 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 talked like we've known each other for a thousand years, and we just really met in person today. So YouTube for me is not only a way to tell my travel stories. I have probably almost 300 story times where I've met Reggie Jackson, the baseball player. I was in the warehouse that eventually burned down and burned down a bunch of his classic cars. Uh, I've met John Wayne Bobbitt, of all people, at the airport, uh, on, on an airplane. Um, I talk about things I did as a kid. Um, just, uh, yeah, I've got five or six more s stories I need to make. So, YouTube for me is a way to tell my story and share my travels with my family and my Hanai. And then I, you know, people who have interest in my content. I'm really happy with it so far. One one thing when I when I showed up this morning, 
um, we have corresponded through our own channels and then we have exchanged you you migrate from you go from channel to email to you know texting so I showed up and I pulled up in the car and he's sitting at the table he ground guides me in over the phone and I get out and I, I put my hand out and he put your hand away and he goes I'm I give I, I'm, I'm a hugger and he give me a hug and um, I haven't I haven't said this to him I haven't said this to him and I don't want to get emotional but when he gave me a hug it, it meant a little bit more to me than I think he did um, his stature he's, he's a little bit taller than me it reminds me of my my older brother who had passed away at 39 some of you know him Mark um, and it was really cool to get that hug I got to say that thank you my brother and one thing one thing he said in this clip just now he kind of glanced over and it's not because he's avoiding not at all but he said his late wife now he's not talking about his late wife that passed five ten years ago I would say what four weeks May 8th May you never forget the day so when I, I follow him and, and when I got that prompt I think the caption of the video was something to the effect of I'm a widower now and I'm like what does he mean by that and he pushes out this video very heartfelt video of his personal life the day she passes away and I was stunned because as some you know I don't share it on my YouTube as much that uh, my mom passed away on January 17th at 317 in the afternoon and um, I'll, I'll never you know that's something that I'm still dealing with and I just thought how can he where does he find the strength from where does he you know and, and a man like Joe uh, gets stronger and stronger and, and believe me watch his channel it's not like he's going through life without any challenges all kinds of challenges but he never makes it anybody else's burden never makes it anybody's issue never complains about it he just said I'm here now this I'm gonna overcome it and maybe he does in a certain amount of time or maybe he doesn't but uh, when I asked him and in his video, he said, hey, my wife passed away. And I think the follow-up video was this itinerary he was going on. And one of them was here at Glen Helen. I'm thinking, his wife just passed away. And I'm going to pause for a moment. And I want him to tell you how he, why he got here at Glen Helen. Because his wife passed away. I'm dealing with my mom's passing. Um, he's been inspirational. And why Glen Helen? Why here? And I go, man, and I text him. I go, I, I don't know what your itinerary is or what your point is. But I'm only 20, 30 minutes I love to hang out for you for the day. And without hesitation, he said, absolutely. But I'm going to ask you, Joe, I want you to tell it. What inspired you to go on this trip immediately after your wife passed? Well, my wife had been disabled, uh, bedridden for a bit. And uh, she always made it clear that she never wanted her disability to hinder my travels. She lived vicariously through my travels. We traveled together. We RV'd uh, full time for five years. Uh, you'll see some of that on, on my channel if you wander by. Uh, she was never the wo a woman that told me what I wanted to hear, nor me to her. It was always what she felt. And she made it clear that she never wanted me to sit in the, in the mobile wishing I could live a life that we weren't able to live together anymore and um she only said what she meant she didn't butter me up on this and she lived she told me she enjoyed and lived vicariously through my travel videos now um what about the text you're saying that you were getting texts from friends after your wife passed oh yeah you... my wife passes and i when i notified people i didn't just call them i sent either ims or texts saying call me when you're ready to hear unpleasant news so they were already prepared i don't think anyone knew but me just how sick my wife was but uh she died of copd and um she um so the people who called me you know i told them and i told them the story and a number of my people my hanai family my, i said just you know you need to come up you need to cut we need this we need to spend time we need to you know of the, of, the, uh, of the term I use, you know, we need a fellowship. So I have a, a friend down here that is like then. I meet the guy Leif last year, uh, uh, two Decembers ago, and it's like we've, we've been brothers our whole lives. So um, Leif said, you know, dude, you need to come down. There's people that you need to meet in his circle. So then I thought, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not on a timetable anymore. It sounds gross, but I'm not on a timetable. So I thought, yeah, I'll come down for two weeks. There's some things here that I want to see. Uh, I want to do some of the 66 stuff. I want to go up to Barstow on the old road. Um, 
And I, I'm sick. I've been sick for seven years now, almost seven years. I call it Loki's gift. And, um, you know, two weeks, I, uh, I rested yesterday. I traveled three days in a row, which is a lot for me. I'm going to rest a little bit tomorrow and Monday. Um, I need to go grocery shopping and pick up some stuff at the Amazon locker. But um, I'm just not in a hurry anymore. And I need my days of rest. And I thought, yeah, hell, two weeks down here, I keep myself occupied. So here I am. And just it's a bonus here, spending the day with my new brother, Vince. And, and as, Vin, I'm sorry. And as and as he got these um, invitations to come visit, I mean, it was it was very quick on the response. People wanted to be in his presence. And I, I, I can tell you why. I can tell you why even before I was able to meet him first on. I mean, he has an aura about him. But then he did a dot-to-dot -dot thing. He says, okay, this person's here, this person's here. So then on one of his YouTube videos, of immediate follow-up, he kind of discusses his itinerary. Well, I didn't hesitate. I said, Joe, prior to his wife passing, we had communicated on the fact that he had been to the Cucamonga service station, unfortunately, when we were closed, because it's only open four days a week. So in turn, I said, hey, Joe, I volunteer there if you're in the area between the days we're open, I'll meet you there and give you a tour. And when I saw his itinerary, which he, he told everybody, I said, Joe, I know exactly where you're going to be at. Let's let's get ourselves on the calendar. And and that's what this trip's all about. So um, I know the majority. I mean, this is something, you know, I don't talk about why I do YouTube videos. And I apologize on my one of my previous ones. My battery ran out and I just ended up closing it by saying I don't watch other motorcyclists to get inspired. I watch other motorcycle videos to get ideas, but I watch people who are going through normal life challenges and how they overcome their challenge. That's what inspires me. Um, I got it. You know, there's always stuff I can learn on the motorcycle. Don't get me wrong. All aspects. I don't mind that. But what's going to inspire me to get out there and challenge myself, overcome? I, I don't think motorcycling is easy. I started at 47. What I do on that motorcycle is my challenge. And I find that strength in visiting people like Joe. Um, I'm probably going to sum up this at this point and, and just say something on one of my taglines that I would say Joe contributed to this philosophy of mine of, if you didn't do it yesterday, don't wait till tomorrow because you're not going to do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it when you get done watching this video. Do not hesitate. One thing that uh, Yosef shared with me was, was you know, we do stuff, we, we mourn our losses, but then we focus and we do stuff for the living and we do stuff for ourselves, not in an egotistical, egocentric type of way, but making sure that we're the best person we can be. So when we have this interaction, we can we can add, we can mutually gain from each other that we don't burden each other and come with all this this grievance. So um, to both our channels, like, subscribe, you know, get out there and fulfill your passion. But once again, I'll, I'll let Joe have the last words as a, my guest. Uh, but I, I will say this and I'm going to turn it over to Joe to sign off. But um, like I said, if you didn't do it, if it's something you have in your heart to do, it could be motorcycle riding, RVing, meeting a friend, phoning your mom. If you didn't do it yesterday, don't plan on doing it tomorrow. Do it today. And keep that and don't let time slip. We can always make up other things in life, but time is something precious. We can never turn back the clock. With that, I'll have Joe close our, our uh, I'll, thing. I'll say two things. One is um, hard times don't make you. They define you. Remember that. And two is I wear a little medallion with a stoic saying that's in Latin. I can't remember it, but it's basically saying, paraphrased and a little longer, just what Vin said. You never, you never know when your last day is, and you better get to it. Whatever you're going to do in life, your mission is, whatever it is, you better get to it because you never know when you're going to run out of time. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching this on Adventure Vin. I'm going to link to it on Life with Yosef. If any of you want to buy and watch my content and think, yeah, this guy's not an ass, not an ass, and I'm going to watch a couple of his, and God love you. Um, if you go to my story times, I've met Reggie Jackson. I've met John Wayne Bobbitt. I, uh, uh, not at the same time. Um, I, I tell stories about my uh, my youth and what I've done outside of the 12 years of travel videos. I've been to Europe uh, for a month, a lot of stuff like that. So if you hell, wander by and have a look, and maybe you think I'm full of myself, and you wouldn't be the first one to tell me that. So in my clothes, thank you for watching Life with Yosef and Adventure Vin. This is the guest host, Joe. Enjoy your day. Peace be with you. 
and I hope to see you watching both of our channels.